These people have all built apps that are generating tens of thousands of dollars a month using only AI. But they, my friends, are the exceptions. Unfortunately, most people, maybe even you, are trying to build their AI app, but get stuck halfway because of a lack of knowledge, tools completely bugging out, or even worse, not knowing how to get started at all. Well, my friends, that's why in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my seven must-know hacks that are gonna completely change the way that you build leveraging AI to ensure that you never get stuck again. No joke, I'm literally gonna show you how to turn an ugly website into a design masterpiece with one prompt, a sneaky way to build complex workflows inside of your app without breaking it, and even how to add insane 3D designs without any experience. So let's go. Okay, so for this first tip, let's face it, most people have terrible taste when it comes to visual design. In fact, a lot of us have the opposite of an eye for design, an eye for picking the ugliest thing every time. Well, I have good news for you. I have a framework that can turn that ugly into beautiful. So let me just show you how it works. Now, the first thing I'll do is go inside of Bolt. For those of you who don't know, Bolt is one of the coding platforms that allows you to do everything just prompt based with AI. So you can just type in what you want to build and it'll start building it out. I'll get it to build the structure of a landing page to get started. So here it is. I have the first version. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but of course I just want to potentially make it look a lot better. And so the next step of this process is to find inspiration online. The best place that I like to look for are Webflow templates. And in this case, I want to use technology. And here there's going to be all sorts of examples of beautiful websites. Let's go with this one. And then I'm going to find a page that I find quite pretty. We're going to take a screenshot of this. And because I want some more elements, I'm going to go a little bit further down and grab this. I can say, hey, this, this is a nice element. And then I'm going to jump back into Bolt. I'm going to grab the three images that I had. I'm going to upload them here and I'm going to say, could you replicate the exact UI, UX and design style? Boom. And just like that, my friends, as you can see here, it has replicated. Now, of course, it's not perfect, but look how much prettier this now is. And it literally matches the exact style. I would say not exact, but very close to. So this, these results are already phenomenal, right? In terms of copying. This is the example over here. This is the Bolt version. So as you can see here, it pretty much copies exactly what we've shown it as a UI UX style. And then we can adapt it from here. And then you can just continue building inside here and it'll follow the same UI UX. Now, another option you have is to go to ChatGPT, for example. Please extract the exact UI UX brand book and guidelines from these images. And what we're doing here is getting it to basically feed us the exact design style that we can then feed back into Bolt. And there it is, my friends. We have the entire color palette here, highlight accents, typography, check it out. It describes the imagery styles, dark UI cards, black cards that have a dark fill. And just like that, my friends, we 10 x your design skills. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the second hack is for those of you who have found yourself building a complicated feature and breaking the entire project because of it. Well, that's because some of these backend workflows are complex. So I found a way to simplify these workflows. So the way we're gonna do this is through automation. You might be familiar with tools like Zapier or Make or N8N or If This Then That or, 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 or there are plenty of them out out there. We're going to create a sequence that has several modules that does a complicated workflow and then sends out a result to us. In this case, we're going to be using Make. This here is an automation that we created for another startup that we built. What this does is that it grabs a job description and it also grabs a resume that someone has uploaded and then it transforms it into a optimized resume based on that job description. So let me explain what it does. First of all, we need to create it as a webhook, meaning that it gets triggered when a specific event happens inside our app. Then we're gonna send it to ChatGPT. Then we're gonna convert it to a PDF so that we can read it. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab the job info. So we basically do all of these different steps and then we create the resume and then we're basically going to optimize the resume. And so there's all these steps that happen, but ultimately it shoots it back into Superbase. So this is just a really smart way to do complicated workflows within your AI built app. Now, once this is built out, we can go and feed it to an AI builder. So in this case, I'm gonna go to another platform that's called Lovable. And by the way, you're gonna find all of these links to all the tools I'm talking about in the description box. So here I would describe the app and it would basically just build it out for me. And I've also said importantly that I'm gonna be using a webhook to actually send the resume and job description and it's gonna send back an optimized resume to Superbase. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and then it's already working. And then the job description, paste the job description. And then as soon as I click on optimize, it would send it and send it back. And then I'm gonna basically say, okay, that looks good and basically it's going to guide you so this is going to be a much easier way to bring this feature inside because imagine trying to build out every single part of this inside of uh, lovable 
It's possible, but you're most likely gonna break something when it comes to these AI builders in general. So when I do complicated things, and I know I can just do it with one automation, then I'm always gonna start off building MVPs leveraging this. Boom, and just like that, my friends, first hack, you're a designer, second hack, you're an engineer. No, okay, let's get serious again. I think you're really gonna love this next one. Punto numero tres. This strategy literally doubled the conversion on a sales landing page that I created. And there are a couple steps to this process, but once you've learned this, you'll never go back to building landing pages the way you used to. And the first step is to consult my good old friend Claude. Or maybe I'll use chat GPT. Wait a second. I just realized that when you say GPT in French, it literally translates to I farted. I'm sure this past year, media in France has been having a good old laugh. I'm inside chat GPT and I also went to Lovable, created a basic first landing page. And I want to show you how I'm going to improve the conversion of this landing page. Now, in this case, yesterday we launched the first ever AI coding bootcamp and we partnered with all of the biggest names in the industry, including Bolt, including Lovable, Lovable, including Superbase, including Replit, including Netlify. Basically, everyone's coming to teach their tool. And we're also going to have one on one coaching and founder networking, all this stuff. Now, that was kind of like a little ad. You can find it in the description. But now I want to build a landing page for that. And so let me show you this first landing page, what it looks like. The only thing I said is, hey, could you build something for this cohort that I'm building? Excellent. However, in this case, I want this copywriting to be way more targeted to the kind of individual I'm looking to attract. The first step is to figure out the ICP, Ideal Customer Profile. So if you already have existing customers, you kind of know some things about those individuals. And if you don't, you could ask ChatGPT to tell you what kind of person might like this product. So in this case, I'm gonna come and say, I am creating the first ever Coding with AI Bootcamp. Now here's the important point. Please create an ideal customer profile. This is gonna allow me to get all the traits from these individuals so I can target them specifically in this landing page. And just like that, it's created a full demographic profile, age, gender, education, geography, firmographic, business size, industry, sector, decision-making role. And here's where the magic comes. Okay, now you're a landing page specialist. Please create a full landing page structure to target this ICP, including all of the copywriting. And just like that, my friends, it has created a hero section. It has created a first section about why this bootcamp. It has created a what you get. So what I'm gonna do with this is grab this entire thing. And then I'm gonna come here and say, please create this exact structure and include this copy. Boom, and there we go. Build your AI powered app in just 30 days, no coding experience required. This is a lot more in line with what I was looking for. And when I scroll down, why you can't afford to miss this opportunity, it's gone way more in details into what you're gonna get from the program. And after a bit more work on design and fine tuning the copywriting that it had given me, this is what my page actually looks like. So we're gonna have all of these partners, they're gonna come in and teach their tools. It's literally the first time this has ever happened. And so it's a great opportunity. If you'd like to join us, you can check it out in the description box. With that, Boom, third tip, now you're a copywriter and landing page specialist. And by the way, you specifically, I know that you're not yet subscribed to the channel. And I know that because about 75% of all the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. So do it. This, my friends, brings us to maybe the most important hack. Christian, I'm stuck. What do I do? Well, before you call 911, let me give you my five step method to debug or troubleshoot once you hit a snag in the road. So for this one, let's go back to Bolt and I'll break down each step. Now, disclaimer, these don't always work, but we have some fallbacks in case none of them work. Okay, so the first way to fix a problem and probably the most obvious one is to literally just press fix. Sorry for just stating the obvious. So I'm here in Bolt and honestly, this time it took me so many tries to try to break this thing, but I finally did. This is a financial audit AI app. And basically the first thing we want to do is to just click attempt fix. Usually I'll click on it up to about three different times. And if that doesn't work, then I will go to the second step. So we have one issue now. We're going to attempt to fix this one. So this is the second time I'm doing it. Boom. And on the second one, it is fixed. So you do want to try this a couple of times, but you can also see inside the chat whether or not it seems like it's resolving it. But let's say that that doesn't work. So let me add some crazy feature here and try to break it again. Awesome. So now we failed to parse. And let's say that this was the fifth time that this happened to us and it was frustrating. So if I just attempt to fix this one, sometimes we have an issue here. But the second uh, part of this would be to simply copy all of the stuff that's inside the error message. Usually it's shown here on the actual uh, preview screen. And then I would basically uh, put that inside of the chat and ask it to fix that. Now I'm not gonna lie, the second phase doesn't usually fix the problem, but I have encountered times where it has. For example, this time it did. Now the third step to troubleshooting for me is always going to be to roll back and to change the actual prompt, right? So this is a specific issue, right? But let's say that we ran into this issue several times and here we had a version that was not broken, right? I would roll back to this checkpoint 
revert now. And then I would simply change the prompt of what I'm asking it to do. Maybe you're not being specific enough. Maybe you have to uh, say, the way that it is currently working and the way that you would like for it to be fixed. Maybe you just have to use the lingo, right? Now, if something really persists, what I'm gonna do is instead of clicking on attempt fix, attempt fix, and you know going back to the last version, attempt fix and changing prompts, uh, I'm actually gonna make a decision. I'm gonna say, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask for it to find a new solution to this specific thing that's coming up over and over and over and over again, right? So for this, usually I'm gonna go inside and see what specifically is happening. It seems like the issue is with the PDF parser. So I'll be like, please could you find an alternative solution to the PDF parsing? Let's go with plan B. And so basically it is telling it, hey, you've tried this many times. Let's try something completely different. Let's try a simpler approach using PDF parse package. You see, so here it's basically identifying the problem. It's trying to find an alternative solution and it may, may not always solve this problem again, but alternative solutions is something that I love giving it as a prompt. And that's probably like my fourth step um, before what I'm gonna start talking about next. Okay, so now we're getting desperate. This thing is broken, attempt fix. We did all the things that Christian told us. Now it is time to take desperate measures, my friends. So. What we can do, and the cool thing is that here, if we go inside of our uh, project, we can go and we can actually download our project here. We can download this zip file, and this project over here is all of the uh, code, and so we're gonna download it, and here what we can do is start fixing stuff manually. So if you spent the past, I don't know, five hours, and you were almost there, and it literally was just like a matter of a kind of a couple little things and you don't know how to fix it because you don't know how to jump here inside the code and fix these specific things. You don't even know what all this stuff means. Perfect. Then you download it, you upload it to cursor, you go through problem shooting through cursor itself. And then if you're not able to fix it that way, then we have the final desperate measure, which is A, start from scratch. I don't recommend this or find someone who can help you touch up this project, meaning they can go into the code base and they can basically see like what the big issue is and help you deploy it from this project. So hopefully this will help you get over your issues and it's time to jump into the fifth. Now, let me take a quick second here to tell you about my buddy, Alex. He used to be the managing director of Plug and Play Los Angeles, one of the largest early stage investment groups that have literally invested in companies like Google, PayPal, Dropbox, and 20 other unicorns. And I met him in Los Angeles when I was the director of a startup accelerator program, he would come and check out the startups to invest. Now, fast forward four years, we're partnering together to create a program called the Peach Score Accelerator Program to basically bring together the know-how and support that an early stage entrepreneur needs. They're looking to take this high growth startup path that requires raising money. And so I'm super stoked because we get to give so much value to founders. But on top of that, if you complete the program, you get a certificate from the prestigious Loyola Marymount University of California. So it's just a great opportunity if you're looking to take this path, because frankly, at this point, you might not know what you don't know. And of course you can check it out in the description. Okay, now let's get back to it. And this one, I see the question every day in my comment section, which is how do I connect a custom domain? And this strategy works perfectly both for Bolt and for Lovable. You see, many people struggle connecting their domain because they buy it from like GoDaddy and then they don't know how to connect the C name. What's a C name? How do I connect these name servers? They don't understand the technical jargon. They don't know how to create the setup. And that's because they're kind of overcomplicating their life. And if that's you, here's a tip that's gonna kind of change the way that you do things. Now, when you're building inside an AI coding platform like Bolt, or this one over here, Lovable, or frankly, a couple of the other ones as well, you're gonna actually be deploying on servers that are gonna be living on this platform called Netlify. Now, the cool thing is that they give you access to free servers at first, especially for people building out their first apps. And so if you're inside of a Bolt project, for example, here you can just click deploy. This deployment will actually deploy to Netlify, as you can see here. This is really gonna be the platform where it's living. Now, here's the fun part you can actually buy domains directly from Netlify. So if you go to your domains, once you create an account, I've attached a couple of the domains I have here, you can go and add, and here it's buy a new domain. When you buy a domain through this, I can tell you it is gonna be so much easier to connect it to your AI coding project, it's literally one click. If not, it's relatively simple. You just have to go through the documentation, but here I can do I love AI coding Maybe this is already gonna be taken. I love AIcoding.com. Excellent. $14 first year, and I can just buy it here. 
So it's perfect. And then it's literally in the click of a button to be able to deploy it to your custom domain. I'm not gonna beat this dead horse. That's pretty much it for this hack, but I think it can save some valuable time, especially for people who are non-technical. That brings us to number six, my friends, which literally has the ability to completely elevate your product, your landing page in just a couple of seconds. That's right, I'm talking about 3D animations. And in a past video, I added one of these to my landing page and you guys gave me so much hate because it didn't perform well, because it was slow, laggy, because it was heavy. So I'm also gonna give you some pro tips on how to make it light and manageable for a web project. Okay, now first and foremost, I'm not actually gonna create these from scratch, although I could. I'm gonna come to a platform called Spline. In this case, I'll come to spline.design and I'm pretty much just gonna come here. I'm gonna use an existing one. I'm gonna to go to examples. I'm going to check out what has been created. And let's say that I wanted to add this iPhone, for example. I can click on that and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate that. And now from here, I can basically grab this design and I can export it. First thing we're gonna do here is to check the um, optimization. So run a test to see how this will perform, right, on a website. This is uh, kind of the place where you can, uh, you, total polygons, you can decrease this amount and then reduce the uh, number of materials. So these are things that you'll be able to do inside of this project setting if you'd like to, so that it can be a little lighter weight, so that if you're seeing that, oh man, it's lagging the website, uh, you're gonna be able to optimize it so that it can perform well. Once I fix that, I can go and check into the play settings and I can basically adapt certain things. Do we want a background color? Uh, let's hide the background color. Um, page scroll, yes, no. So there's basically lots of settings, right, about like how you would want to be able to interact with this thing. Once that's done, you can come to overview over here and you can grab an so update public URL as soon as you've made a change. And now what we can do is copy this embed link. We can come over here to Bolt and we can basically tell it, uh, could you create a separate section at the end of this website and include this blind design. Let's go ahead and do that. And now if I scroll to the bottom here, let's see what it's done. It is so beautiful, I love it. And of course there are some adaptations here as you can see that I'm gonna wanna make. But yeah, this thing looks so neat. Now tell me that that's not crazy. You're now a 3D designer. Numero siete. Well, this is actually a couple of smaller hacks which I like to use before we actually deploy the project to make sure that it's properly optimized. Now the first thing I do when I'm ready to launch is to ask it to improve the code base. So to find any inconsistencies or mistakes in the code base and fix them. Number two, I will ask it to refactor if needed. So sometimes when you're building with these platforms, there's basically a lot of convoluted code that we can break down into more digestible components so that they can be more scalable. And so if we ask it to refactor, it's going to help us have a better performing app. Now just a heads up, it can break when we do this. So be careful with that. And maybe you want it to first identify the elements that could use some refactoring and then target only those elements when you ask for it. And then finally ask it to optimize it for mobile. So naturally these platforms are already optimizing for mobile view, but you do want to check and you do want to make sure to tell it one last time, hey, could you optimize this for mobile before we launch? And that's it, mamma mia, ready for launch. The launch has come, call Giselle Bunchen, Leonardo DiCaprio, and all your other famous friends, red carpet, champagne, this is a huge event. No, it's not, don't over glorify your launch, get it in front of people who will actually use it, break it, love it, hate it, and get some feedback to make sure you're on the right track when we can monetize this thing, because we're not trying to build apps, we're trying to build businesses. Now all these tips are amazing, but if you don't know the process from start to finish to building and launching a profitable app, then check out this video because I run you through in 72 hours how to build it, how to go to market with it, and how to get first paying customers. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let's go!